Hi, everyone. We're project number 32, and our project is on cancer predictors in the United States. We'll work with the US CDC cancer statistics data set, which includes data from 1999 to 2018. We'll be using the file chartbarsite.txt, which has childhood cancer detailed by primary cancer site groups information. We chose this uh, data set because there were less categorical columns with an extreme number of unique values. Our project started out with three main questions, whether there are certain predictors that are strongly predictive of new cancer incidence and death rates, um, what are the effects of various parameters on cancer incidence rates and death rates, and whether these important predictive features of event rate change over years. So due to the high volume of data and the structured nature of our missing values, we decided to drop the rows with missing data entirely. Um, we also settled on choosing age adjusted rate as our response variable and removed as such variables such as count, population, and confidence interval information um, from our data set to produce a more non-trivial problem as they seem to almost uniquely define the response variable. This leaves us with predictors of age, population, race, sex, site, and year. So the first question that we wanted to address was finding a set of most significant predictors for cancer rate. In order to approach this problem, we aggregated various methods of feature selection, which included linear methods like lasso, elastic net, and backward stepwise models, as well as machine learning methods such as support vector machines and random forest models. Um, each one of these selection methods produced a set of most important um, predictors. Um, so we counted up the frequency that each predictor was found to be important by each method. Um, we sorted them by most frequent to least frequent and added them one by one to a linear model. And at each step, we uh, use cross-validation to calculate an average mean squared error score um, to find out like the optimal number of predictors that we would want to include in a final model. Um, you can see here from the plot that cross-validation uh, mean squared error scores plateau at around 22 predictors. So we combined our results and fit a final linear predictive model using the 22 most important predictors as determined by our various methods of feature selection. Um, it is important to note that we maintained a linear feature constraint for a computational complexity. Um, we can consider analyzing the actual appearances of the covariates. Um, specifically, we noticed that race and year tend to dominate the significant subset of features as they appear kind of multiple times across all feature selection methods. Um, we noticed that these data are high, mostly categorical, uh, race and year specifically, so we might be motivated to actually analyze them separately and try to model them using independent models, as this might suggest some kind of concept shift or coverage shift problem. Um, and as a simple example, we report a few coefficients below. Uh, specifically, we can consider the female coefficient at negative 0.22, um, which suggest, suggests a kind of negative relationship between the female indicator and cancer rate and a positive relationship between the male indicator and cancer rate. Besides the linear method, we also tried to use random forest, which gave us a very high uh, test and train accuracy of 0 .0, uh, 0.99. So we originally used this method on the whole data the set, which gave us this um, a profile of different important uh, features, which make, make a lot of sense because the mortality and incidence were selected as the top two, which, because they're actually the features that determine the meaning of our response variable. So go, uh, going forward, we want to uh, separate the whole data set by this um, two different features and also um, by different year group to answer our second question, which is whether, whether the important features um, would change across years. So as an example, here we present you like a, a instant rate uh, across different year groups from the very earliest time to the most recent. We can see that from the graph that across years, the same set of uh, important features were consistently selected, which are mainly those uh, groups that's under the uh, under the category of cancer sites, which make a lot of sense because um, as uh, for cancer, all the biological um, ontology might be the most important predictive factors compared to other things like years or race. And among those, um, all cancer sites combined, acute myeloid and soft tissues were kind of consistently um, selected as the top predictors. But when we look closely, there's also differences across years, 
for example, the non-Hodgkin lymphoma and acute myeloid shows a shift to um, shift towards the downside of the importance across all the years, meaning that they become less and less important as a predictive factor. Um, for acute myeloid, there is actual bi biological evidence that in recent years, there are like treatment towards certain genotype of that disease being developed. So that may suggest that these can actually reveal some biological significance, although we might be more cautious when actually doing causal, uh, predict, uh, causal inference. In conclusion, we used several models to model cancer data provided by the US CDC. We quantified the importance of each predictor and also noted that this importance varies over years and by event type. While we only use a subset of data, our work can be further generalized to other files in the data set and can include more advanced modeling techniques in the future. For more information, please refer to our write-up. Thank you for listening.